Welcome back, Rich Minds. It's your boy, Reno, coming back to you with another video. And today's topic is going to be why they tried to break you. Yes, sir. Let me say a lot of for the people in the back. Listen, chosen ones, this video is based upon why they tried to break you. Now, let me say this, y'all. They can't break something that God has built up. Yes, sir. They can't uproot a seed that has been planted by God. Yes, sir. And they can't stop something that was already written. All right? So listen, you don't got to worry about somebody trying to break you. It ain't going to happen. You don't got to worry about somebody trying to take your spot. It is incapable. And you don't got to worry about somebody trying to replace you or remove you. God has had you in this position for a reason. And they can't move you. It don't matter how much they don't like it. It don't matter how much they hate you. It don't matter how much they don't like you. It don't matter. Yes, sir. Somebody drop in the comments and say it don't matter. All right? Make sure you drop in the comments and say it don't matter. And so we're going to go ahead and get directly into this video, y'all. But before we do so, if any one of these resonated with you, make sure you leave a thumbs up on this video as well as subscribe to the channel. Yes, sir. And not only that, but make sure you drop in the comments and say you can't break me. All right? And so the first reason of why they want you to break you, chosen one, is going to be this, y'all. They envy you. Okay? Let me say it one more time louder for the people in the back. Yeah, I said it, y'all. They envy you, okay? They envy you. They envy the way you walk. They envy the way you talk. They envy the way you look. They envy what you have, okay? And I think I said this once before, y'all, but people can have way more than you and still be jealous of you, okay? People can have way more than you and still envy what you have. It's like, you don't want God to bless me? You don't want me to live in my blessings. You don't want me to live in my anointing. You don't want me to walk in my favor. It's all good if they got everything that they have and you don't have nothing. Everything is all good. But when you have and when you start to build and when you start to receive and when you start to get blessed, they can't stand that. And so what I'm simply saying is, y'all, you're going to have to separate yourself from these individuals who are acting like this towards you. OK, but more importantly, they envy you. And so what happens is, y'all, they're going to start trying to treat you certain ways. They're going to start acting a certain way towards you. They're going to start being all type of dysfunctional towards you. Why? Because they want to break you. They don't want to see you have the blessings that God has given you. They don't want to see you become successful. They don't want to see you start going up the charts and start elevating yourself. They don't want to see that, chosen ones. And so understand this. It even states in 1 Corinthians, all right, chapter 13, verse 4, it says that love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud, right? Let me say it one more time louder for the people in the back. Listen, chosen ones. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. So if a person envy you, they ain't showing love. I ain't going to say they don't love you, but they definitely, not, they definitely not showing love at that particular time or at that particular point in your life or in that moment, right? They ain't showing no love. How? Because love is patient. Love is kind, right? It does not envy. Why envy me? It is not boast. It is not proud. Why are you envying me? Right? Maybe you look, maybe you the, you know, the most beautiful woman, right? And they can't stand that. Maybe you a handsome guy and they can't stand that. Maybe you are a smart, intelligent person. Pause on that real quick. Understand this, y'all. If you are intelligent, if you are beautiful, if you are, uh, you know, handsome, right? You have something that other people don't have. That's enough right there in itself. Just for a person to dislike you or envy you, just because of how you look, just because of, you know, what you talk about, how you, how you talk about it, right? You got that it feather. Somebody drop in the comments and say, I have that it feather. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments and say, I have that it feather. Okay. Sometimes y'all, it's not what's on you. It's about what's in you. All right. Let me say it one more time. It's not about what's on you. Okay. Because you can wash that off, right? You can mimic somebody, right? It's Y'all, it's so many people who can dance like Michael Jackson. They look like Michael Jackson, but they'll never be Michael Jackson, right? It's so many people who can, you know, uh, impersonate James Brown or impersonate this person, 
right? Y'all ever heard of Jay Pharoah? He can act like Jay Z. He can act like Jamie Foxx. He can act like a lot of per a lot of people. But guess what? He'll never be them because it's not what's on you. It's what's in you. And that's the same reason why they dislike you. Yes, sir. Somebody drop in the comments and say it's in me and not on me. Understand that, y'all. That's very important and imperative to know. So realize this. They try to break you. And the main reason of why they want to break you is because they envy you. They can't stand to see you succeed. They can't stand to see you smile. Have y'all ever walked in the room, y'all? And when you walk in that room, it's almost like they hate the fact that you are smiling. They hate the fact that you probably, you may be going through something, but you ain't showing it. You can't even be around this person without them trying to put their negativity on you. They wake up wrong. They wake up in the morning wrong, right? Like, y'all, you go to work and you just can't stand to be around Miss Michelle. You can't stand to be around Shonda. You just can't because you know they finna come with some negative drama. You know they about to come with all their problems. You know they about to come with all this negative energy. Oh, man, my husband, he ain't acting right. Oh, my kids, they always got to do something wrong. Oh, man, I can't stand to come to work. And then you, and then they mad and wonder why you don't want to be around them. You too negative, Right? And so when you come in with your beautiful smile, you come in, you know, uh, looking how you look, talking intelligent the way you talking as if life ain't weighing down on you. When we all got problems, they can't stand that. And so they're going to envy that. Right. They're going to envy that. But look, I need y'all to drop in the comments and say, don't envy me. Right. It's enough blessings for everybody to go around. Everybody can walk in their calling. The problem is they don't want to answer it. Anybody can be happy. The problem is they don't want to go out here and seek happiness. Anybody can become successful. The problem is they don't want to put in the work to become successful. Drop in the comments and say, don't envy me. All right. Number two, y'all. The second reason of why they try to break you is going to be the chosen ones. They are afraid of your power. Yes, sir. They are afraid of your power. Before I move forward, y'all, somebody drop in the comments and say they are afraid of my power. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments and say they are afraid of my power. So, Reno, pause for a second. What is my power? What do you mean by that, right? Am I going inside the magical treasure box and pulling out some power? No. Listen, y'all. Your power is your gift. It's that thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. Your talent, something that you probably taught yourself or something that you was gifted at from birth. You didn't even have to learn something from somebody else. All, it, all you did was refine it by developing the gift or developing the talent. But understand this, y'all. It's your gift. It's your talent. It's your ability, right? Uh, it's your calling, okay? It's all those things, and that is what gives you your power. That's what gives you your ability. That's what gives you, you know, that thing, that it factor. That's what gives you all these things. You have a talent. You have an ability. You have a gift, right? And see, the even sadder part about this, y'all, they even sell the reality about this. They got the gift too. They have a talent too. They have an ability too. But they so worried about your food and your plate, they food is about to get cold. Okay? Somebody drop in the comments and say, don't worry about me. Yes, sir. Don't worry about me. Why? Because God got you. But the even sad reality, once again, y'all, God got them too. But they're so focused on what he's doing for this child. Not realizing that they are a child of God themselves. They got to start worrying about you. Start worrying about what you're about to accomplish. Start worrying about what you're what you're going to achieve, right? A person can look at your future and tell his brain. A person can look and see the blessings that God has over your life. A person can look and see that. They can tell it by how you walk. They can tell it by how you talk. They can tell it by what's on the inside of you. Understand this, y'all. Your gift, your abilities, your talent, your skill sets. They envy that as well, okay? Realize this. They are afraid of your power because they know exactly what it can lead you to. They know exactly where it can take you. They know it's going to take you over the mountain. They know it's going to take you to the moon. They know it. They know it. And they want you to stay in that same box of what they are. They want you to stay in that same realm of where they reside. They want you to stay right here in that same hometown. But understand this, y'all. Jesus would have never became who he was had he not left the city of Nazareth. Had he not left, you know, the place that he was born at, where he knew everybody at, okay? Where he knew everybody at, where Mary birthed him at. He had to leave to perform those miracles. 
And that's the same thing with you. See, they are afraid of your power because they know what you are capable of. They know what you are capable of, okay? They want to break you, but they can't. So understand this, y'all. And I want to elaborate more. Uh, Saul and David. Saul and David, y'all. Saul and David. Saul was anointed. It says in the scripture that he was. And David was anointed. It says in the scripture that he was, right? But understand this, y'all. Saul seen the power of David, right? Y'all know David, the one who took the sling shot and with that with the rock and not Goliath on his way. Y'all know, y'all know David. But rock, but check this out though. Understand what I'm saying, y'all. David had an anointing. Uh, Saul had an anointing, but he couldn't stand and see the power of David because he knew that he was going to become king. He knew that David was going to do something great. He knew these things about David, and so he wanted to stop it. But one thing about God and his promises, you can't stop it. One thing about God and his promises, you can't break it. They want to break you, but they can't. And so they get so mad, y'all. Realize this. Listen, you have gift, abilities, a calling, talents, all these different things, and they are afraid of your power, okay? If that resonated with you, y'all drop in the comments and let me know if it resonated, all right? So with that being said, y'all, we're going to the third reason of why they want to break you. And that's going to be this, y'all. God has an anointing over you, okay? Let me say it louder for the people in the back. Listen, chosen ones, God has his anointing over you. And so with that being said, I want to go ahead and get directly into uh, this particular scripture about this, y'all. So y'all tune in. Check this out. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 once again, y'all, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, it says, As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. Let me say that one more time, louder, for the people in the back. Listen, y'all, it says, as for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it taught you, remain in him. Man, there's so many gems in that scripture just alone. Yeah, not counterfeit. This ain't fake. This is real. They see your anointing and they know it's real. Somebody drop in the comments and say it's real. Yes, sir. They see your anointing and they know it's real. They see your anointing and they know it's not counterfeit, right? Also, your anointing that you receive from him is teaching you, right? It's leading you. You don't need nobody else. All you need is that anointing. That's where the wisdom resides. That's where the knowledge resides. And that's where you gain the understanding from the anointing that you have. This is why when a person walk around you and they ain't right, your, your anointing is going to let you know they ain't right. This is why when you walk in the building and you feel like something ain't right, guess what? Your anointing going to let you know it ain't right. Understand this, y'all. Your anointing is on you at all times. They want to break that. But once again, like I said in the beginning, they can't break something that God has built up. They can't uproot a seed that God has planted. And they can't stop what was already written. You have an anointing over your life, and they're going to have to deal with it. They're just going to have to deal with it, y'all. And so in and so in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, it's telling you that your anointing is real. And so if your anointing is real, the people who sees it on the outside, they understand and know that it's real as well. So understand that, y'all. Your anointing is not a game, y'all. And like I told y'all in his last analogy with Saul and David, they both were anointed. But David, but Saul seen David's anointing and he hated it, right? He seen his power and he hated it. So understand this, y'all. It can be somebody who's very well anointed, just like you. But they don't realize their own anointing. They're so focused on your anointing, right? Realize this. They gonna try to break you because of that. Somebody drop in the comments once again and say, you can't break me, okay? Understand that chosen ones is real. And so if that third reason resonated with you, make sure you drop in the comments and let me know, y'all. So we're going to get to the fourth reason of why they tried to break you, okay? The fourth reason of why they tried to break you is going to be this, y'all. You have uncontrollable growth, okay? 
Once again, you have uncontrollable growth. So Reno, what does that mean? I mean, you're growing exponentially. It's no way around that, y'all. You are growing exponentially. Every day is something new. Every day you you working on another book. Every day you working on another video. Every day you doing another head. Every day you working on something else to get you to the next level. You have uncontrollable growth, right? As y'all know, I love a lot of black history, so I like to use analogies from that particular time. Listen, y'all, the Black Panther Party, all right? The Black Panther Party was growing. I believe that, y'all, the Black Panther Party was one of the biggest organizations that the black community has uh, created and organized, and it actually worked. The problem was everything wasn't taken care of as far as uh, legalities, right? Because now you're talking about a government who can basically shut down your program, right? A government who, who can basically shut down your program. Well, Reno, what are you saying? Understand this, y'all. They were growing uncontrollably, right? They were growing so much that when it came to the government, when it came to, you know, the people who were seeing it, those who was the button pushers, they're like, no, I don't like that. Y'all seen the movie on, uh, on belly, the dude who had eaten a banana and he had all that stuff on his mouth. He was like, I don't like that. Mm, I don't like that. Well, that's the same thing with the government, y'all. The government, they didn't like how the Black Panther Party was uh, growing. They had uncontrollable growth. They didn't like that. And so what they had to do was break that, right? They had to break you. Um, they had to break that. Same thing with Martin Luther King, y'all. They had to break Martin Luther King's growth. Why? Because they seen how well he was growing. Malcolm X, they seen how much he was growing. It was uncontrollable. They touching the world, right? And let alone when they when they shook hands for the first time, right? When they shook hands, that was even more powerful and monumental. But realize and understand this, y'all. You have uncontrollable growth and they can't stand to see it. You are growing exponentially. Whatever that is for you, right? Whether you are a cosmetologist, another YouTuber, right? You good with your hands, you build stuff, but you are continuously reinventing yourself. You are continuously growing. You are continuously making yourself better. And so when people see that on the outside looking in, they trying to break it. And let alone people on the inside looking out. That causes infiltration. So that's why you got to watch the people who are around you as well as the people that you watch on the outside. Because... It's better to have a thousand enemies on the outside than to have one on the inside. Why? Because if you have infiltration, that's going to break down the organization. Think about it, y'all. When it came to the Black Panther Party, it was infiltration. It was informants. People who was giving the government information from the inside, right? I think Malcolm X had informants, infiltration. Martin Luther King had informants. Okay, infiltration. Realize this, y'all. You are having uncontrollable growth, and there's a lot of people who does not like your growth. All right, you're gonna have to understand and realize that, y'all. And so we're gonna move on to the last one, which is gonna be number five, y'all. So the fifth reason of why they try to break you is gonna be this, chosen ones. They don't believe. Okay, let me say it one more time, louder for the people in the back. They don't believe. Well, believe what, Reno? They don't believe that you are who you say you are, okay? They don't believe that you are God's child. They don't believe that you are unbreakable. They don't believe that you are strong the way you say you're strong. So what So what are they doing to you? They're testing you, right? They're testing your patience. They're testing your faith. They're testing to see that you are who you say you are. They're testing your character. They, they don't believe, right? And so they feel like, oh, no, nah, I'm going to break him. I'm going to break him. I'm going to break her. Yeah, I'm going I'm to break them right on in. No. Nah. See, what the thing is, y'all, God's people don't break they bend. Right? God's people don't break they bend. Well, why do they bend, Reno? Because they understand how to move like a chameleon. They understand how to, you know, adapt to their, adapt to their situations. Right? They understand how to maneuver around the, the hardship and calamity. They understand how to maneuver through that. God's people don't break, they bend, right? And so as you are, you know, moving forward in life, moving forward, you know, throughout your journey, you got to understand that they don't believe that you are who you say you are. They don't believe that you are as kind as you say you are. They don't believe that you are as strong as you say you are. They don't believe that you say you have that anointing, right? That you say you are. They, they don't believe it. And so you have to show them, okay? But the problem, but the thing is, you don't even got to prove a point. All you got to do is continue to keep walking in your anointing, continue to keep walking in your favor, continue to keep walking in your calling, continue to keep walking, right? And, your, and that character that you built, 
right? That, and not that, not that you built, but that character that whatever you've been through built, right? Whenever you lost that loved one, okay? Whenever you lost that job, whenever you lost that car, right? You got to continue to keep allowing that character to build you because as you keep moving forward in life, it's going to be some people who are put here to test you. They want to see you out of character. They trying to break that. They want to see you, you know, get all disorderly. Because look, y'all, they ain't who they say they was. I don't believe who, I don't believe that they say they this type of person. Look, I'm gonna try to break them. I'm gonna try to break them, right? It's no different from a man trying to break a woman who says, look, I carry myself with morality. He had this homeboy like, man. I bet you I hit that, bro, in like five days, bro. I bet you I hit that in like seven days, right? Or a woman trying to break a man who says, look, I stand on principle, I stand on discipline. And she's like, girl, I get. I bet you I get some money from her. I bet you I get something from her, right? They don't believe that they are who they say they are, right? And so you got to understand that that's the same case with yourself. There are people who don't believe that you are who you say you are. And so they're going to try to test you as much as possible. And what people don't realize is the true test of gold is fire. Yes, sir. Somebody drop in the comments and say, I've been through the fire. Okay. Make sure you drop in the comments and say, I've been through the fire. All right. And so as I conclude this video, y'all, it's going to be some people who try to break you. They are so mad that they could not destroy you. Right. They are so mad that you didn't fall for their trap. They are so mad that they couldn't break you. Yes, sir. And look, y'all, as I conclude this video, once again, I need y'all to drop in the video. I need y'all to drop in the comments and say, you can't break me. Okay. Make sure you drop in the comments and say, you can't break me and so with that being said y'all y'all already know how we do y'all make sure y'all check out any one of the links in my description check out any one of my books that's eight steps to self-publishing a successful book rich mentality traumatized by love as well as fairly unequal also be sure to check out any one of my memberships that's my youtube membership as well as my patreon i'm gonna catch y'all in the next video keep a rich mentality peace